guys, this is the real Quaid here. Uh, I'm going to be doing a quick little tutorial on how to use the Poké Radar. So, uh, the idea of the Poké Radar is to chain together consecutive encounters with the same Pokémon, with the end goal being to reduce the chance of a shiny from 1 in 8192 unto 1 in about 200, which is much, much better. So. What you're going to need to, to have basically before the chain begins is you're obviously going to need the Poké Radar. Mine is currently registered so that I only need to press Y, so I'm going to skip that step as far as the menu is concerned. The other thing you're going to need is a bunch of Max Repels to prevent wild encounters from basically getting in the way. Um, so now the only Pokémon that I will encounter as I go through are Pokémon that are summoned via the radar. So when I activate this, you're going to see some shaking spots. So uh, let me do that. So there were a couple of different types of shakes. Um, and basically what you need to do is you need to chain together shakes that were of the same variety. So here we have a Skiddo. So I need to basically remember what the shake looked like when I encountered this for the first time. Um, and as the chain continues, I need to go to the same shake every time. That is supposedly how it works in the new generation. That's not exactly how it worked in the fourth generation, so it took some getting used to. Um, the other thing to mention is that when you encounter the Pokémon, the two things that you need to do in order to keep the chain is to either knock it out or to catch it. If you run away, the chain will break, so don't do that. Uh, let me focus here for a second. So, I didn't have any spots there that I'm too thrilled with. They all seemed kind of blah. They were a little unaggressive. The one that I went to kind of had a lot of shaking going on. So, what you also can do, if you don't have a spot you're comfortable with, especially if you have one that's on the edge here, um, either on the edge of the... especially like here, for instance, because there's a chance that you will break the chain, uh, is you can kind of walk around for a second to recharge the Poké Radar and then fire it off again. So, like, again, we had one here, the one right below me, is probably the spot I will find a Skiddo here, but again, I don't really want to go there. And there's a spot also to my right that I'm kind of scared of, so I kind of need to be careful here. The reason I don't want to go there is because if there are no shaking spots, because basically the spots are determined totally at random based on your current location. If there are no shaking spots, then the chain will end automatically no matter how far you are. And because there are spots directly next to you that are not grass spots, there is a chance that the game will have tried to put a spot there um, and it would not have found a grass spot and then you would basically be out of luck and the chain would just end no matter where you were. So I was able to find one here, so we have another Skiddo and we're back on our merry way after a quick little detour. So depending on the rarity of the Pokémon, you're going to need to be more careful like that. On more common Pokémon, if you're trying to chain them, you might be able to get away with it, but Skiddo is not exactly the most common on this route, so I'm going to try to be more cautious about it. So let me focus again. i got a nice spot over here. This should work just fine. And it did. Perfect. So basically you're going to keep doing this over and over again until you get to 40. So it's nice to have a Pokemon that has moves with 20 PP or ones that add up to 20. Or basically ways that you can quickly notice how far you've gotten without needing to count them specifically. It's also obviously best if you have them full so that I know after 10 encounters my Dazzling Gleams will be gone. And so forth like that. So pardon me for a second again here while I focus. We had one over here. You know, I kind of I'd like to pause so that I can kind of focus all of my attention on the shaking spots. Because they are easy to miss, especially in this flowery grass. I would have preferred to do more typical grass to encounter these, but this I'm on Route 5 right now, and this is probably the most ideal sh um, chaining spot that I've noticed in the entire game, so I figured I'd do it for the demo here. Um just because I didn't necessarily care what I caught. Um, I just wanted to show it off. So those actually all look like they would be good. I'm going to go 
here, I I want to avoid ones that are close to me because I've had issues with if I go to the closest one, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to work. And it looks like it didn't seem to work anyway. So unfortunately, my chain has broken. We have a fur fro here that kind of ruined our day. Um, but I, I feel like there is a little bit of difference between some of these shakes. Maybe that's just my paranoia coming in. So we managed to get a chain of, uh, hold on, let me check my PP. I went to the wrong menu. I think there was about five there. But um, basically, you got the gist of it. Um, that's pretty much all you need to do. Oh, we got four, even worse. Great. So hopefully that'll give you guys... Hey, so uh, to cut this video kind of short, it turns out I was not able to successfully get a shiny spot, but I did learn a lot about chaining in the meantime while I continue to roll and try to get chaining and stuff. It seems that there are more than just the the two spots um, that... Like, basically, from the fourth generation, there was the kind of shaky, and then there was the really shaky, and then the third one was the shiny shake. It seems like in this generation, there's actually several stages of in-between. There's, like, the lowest level of shake that doesn't have anything in it, and then there's probably, like, there's actually probably, I'd say, four levels of different shake um, of the grass patch, and then there's the shiny on top of it. So uh, some of the difficulty that I had with that was just the failure failure to recognize, um, you know, which one I was actually looking at. So uh, hopefully at some point in the future I will be able to chain successfully. Um, but I hope in the meantime this gave you guys at least a better understanding of how to do it. I know simply by making the video I learned a lot about it. So it's really just taking the time. Once you get the basics down, it's just actually getting in there and uh, trying it for yourself. So hopefully this will give you guys a starting point. And uh, I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.